One of the things your listeners need to keep hearing about over and over again is that this AI stuff is real um, and it is going to have an impact. And if you're not starting to prepare for that, it could be problematic. Hi, this is Christian Jones, and you're listening to the Pro Marketer Podcast, where whether you're in tax compliance, preparation, resolution, counting, or any of the other slices of our industry in this tax and accounting space, we're trying to bring on this podcast tools, strategies, resources, and conversations like this one with Dave Hartley that are going to help you think about both where we're at um, in this time, in this present moment within our industry, how to better build your practice. We want to serve you guys. We want these conversations to be uh, not short, you know, they're about 30 minutes, but jam packed with information. And, and we've got a lot of good past conversations that if you're just bumping into us for the first time, please go back. There's a lot of smart people, much smarter than me that we've interviewed. And, and certainly we've got another one on deck today because I've got Dave Hartley with um, Anders CPA. Dave, thank you for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks, Christian. I'm not sure if I qualify for the smarter than you category, but uh, I'll do the best I can. Oh, man, I guess I guess we'll find out in the next 30 minutes. But I have a safe <laughs> bet that you're in a, a CPA to start with. You've got me beat having passed all those crazy tests just at a minimum. But Dave is a CPA, of course, as we're, as we're discussing and believes in the future of the CPA profession that it looks different than it has in the past. We're going to talk about that a lot today. And Dave is uh, personally spearheading growth and innovation efforts at Anders CPA, where he's located, Anders CPA and Advisors. Um, and he's, a, a, I believe, in leadership over that firm's advisory practice in particular. Is that right, Dave? Yeah, that's correct. There we go. And so you're a technologist, you're an innovator, you're a successful business executive in your own right. And we're just going to kind of pull out some of your expertise and some of your thoughts at large and see where we go. Um, does that sound like a, a plan to you, Dave? Yeah, that sounds great. I've covered a lot of territory in my career, um, which uh, to, to be polite, I usually say it's been multiple decades how long I've been doing this, uh, but I've seen a lot of different things and uh, actually started in the CPA world and then pivoted pretty hard to technology and then came back to the CPA world. So I have a slightly different perspective um, and hopefully some of the things that we can talk about will be very helpful to your listeners. I hope we flesh out some of that, you know, back and forth CPA, technology CPA, I'm sure we will. Um, but now that, okay, you're in the CPA world presently, right? That's our space. That's what we're going to talk about today. Yep. Um, kind of the first thing we're going to discuss is just give us your take. Let's just go high level. The future of the CPA profession, and maybe you got to go backwards to go forwards first. Like, what do you think is changing that's been normal? And certainly, what do you think is going to be normal moving forwards? Let's go there first. Yeah. And that that is a that personally is a very interesting topic for me, uh, because I do believe, I actually did, uh, there's another podcast podcast episode I did, we can probably drop it in the show notes, but sure. where I specifically talked about uh, why today is the best day ever to be a young CPA. And mm -hmm. I honestly believe that because when I look at where the profession is today, so I started back in the early 90s. And when I look at sort of what we did there and the value that was created by CPAs then, as opposed to what the opportunity is today, it's unbelievable. And so mm -hmm. we in that, you know, when I think about that topic, you know, a lot of things come to mind, more flexibility today than ever. Uh, you know, back when I started, uh, I started an audit and you went wherever the work papers were. So even if you right. got two feet of snow, you had to go to where the work papers were. Now, not mm -hmm. only can you work whenever, wherever, uh, you know, you can also work for firms in different parts of the country. I mean, just that flexibility, that was my number one. But then there are a number of other reasons. The profession is changing faster than ever. Um, and when I think about where we're at today, and 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 I, uh, Christian, I do want to talk about technology a little bit because I think mm -hmm. you know one of the things your listeners need to keep hearing about over and over again is that this AI stuff is real um, and it is going to have an impact. And if you're not starting to prepare for that, it could be problematic. But that's one of the things from my perspective that's incredibly exciting because I know when I came into the profession, I didn't necessarily get to do the most fun stuff. And I, I think right. we made progress on that. Uh, but I think what's going to happen with AI, a lot of that lower level work that nobody likes doing, I think will be done by the technology. So so, um, so check out that other episode. But those are some of the highlights of why I think today is a phenomenal time uh, to be coming into the CPA profession. I love that. And you know, just to be honest, most recent podcasts, especially this year, 
given what, you know, kind of blew up on Twitter with ChatGPT earlier in the year and obviously has already been here, but people just had a little more awareness of AI and especially with content, but certainly in the tech space. We've talked with a lot of people about AI. And so what you're saying is, hey, AI can actually make some of the menial tasks, some of the stuff that you just got to sink your teeth into when you're starting out. You can get past that. You can go to higher level stuff more quickly. What else are you seeing? What are some other trends with AI that we should be aware of? Well, I think so. So right now, and 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 uh, I was on a panel a few months ago, and we talked about this. There were some educators on the panel, and I think right now we're in a stage where, unless you're accessing ChatGPT or you're specifically going out and doing things, it's kind of this other world. There's been some mm-hmm. recent recent statistics that. Uh, and studies, despite everything you hear, less than 20% of, of CPAs and Americans have actually tried any of these tools. So for the vast right. majority of folks, certainly some of your listeners, they've heard about it, but they've never actually experienced it yourself because you have to go out and actually log into chat GPT, create an account, start trying some right. things and figure it out, which is my number one tip, by the way, which is just go try stuff, start hear about one of these tool, tools, Go try it, see how it works, um, and and you know, just figure out what works for you. So I, I think mm. it is going to be significant. I think it's going to be impactful. On that panel that I was just mentioning, uh, I had a couple of of people that you know when I first started hearing about this, I was thinking maybe if I can get ten percent additional productivity, twenty percent additional productivity, that is mind blowing. And so right. I was on this panel and I put that out there, like, you know, I'm feeling cocky about that. And then I had uh, the next panelist said, well, give me an accountant with the tool versus two accountants without the tool. And I was like, okay, now we're talking multiples in terms of productivity boost. So that, that kind of right. made an impact with me. And then the next person went and said, give me one person with the tool versus three accountants without the tool. And I'm like, okay, th- this is real. This is big. And these were people who have had the time to actually play with the technology and and start to look at it and figure it out. From our perspective, yeah. you know, we're we're seeing a lot of very interesting things with with chatbots. But that's where it becomes real because right now mm. you have to go and you have to seek it out. Where this is going to mm. become real, and we're seeing this every day. More product annou- announcements where these tools right. are getting built into the tools we already use on a day to day basis. That's where this stuff gets real because right now it's living mm. in this other world. And when it's brought to us and it actually starts living in our world, that's when I think people are going to say, oh, wow, this is this is pretty amazing. That's really insightful because it does feel like probably most people, I would be surprised if there's a percentage that's large who haven't heard about AI, ChatGPT, or the integrations and tools that are coming that are already here or on the horizon um, but that being said, I think it's interesting that like, you know, the 20% that's actually using it, that feels right. You know, like everyone's talking about it. Not many people have engaged with it. So like if I'm a CPA, an accountant, if I'm doing tax and I'm sitting here saying, okay, Dave, how do I just start playing with it? What would I do first? What would you recommend they go try and use before all the tax software and all the other things that we use starts to just have it swimming in the systems we already are touching. If I'm going to that third party, what would I go start doing? How would I start playing with this? Where did you start? Yeah, Give us so some number, sense. Yeah, perfect. The number one thing I would recommend is go create an account on ChatGPT and and just and then start putting questions in. So one of the disciplines that I try to do every day, so first go set up the account, but then what you have to start doing is ChatGPT and these technologies will help you solve problems you don't even know you have. Because forever, right. we've just been doing right. it that way. And right. and it's like, I never even thought there was a different way until you see it. And then you're like, oh, wow, that's going to be a huge time right. saving. And the only way right. you start to learn those things is by experimenting. So create an account. And then as you go through your day, every task that you do, think about, huh, I wonder if ChatGPT could help me with this. And then it's like, you know, okay, I'm working on ideas for a podcast. Or we'll be sitting in a meeting and a question will come up. And I'll put into chat GPT, help me understand the differences between this and this and why certain approach would be better than the other. Boom. And in the way I envision it, it's almost like it's like I have a, a, a dozen interns that normally with an intern, 
Yeah, right. you you give them an assignment and they go away and work on it for a few hours and then they come back mm. and it's good quality work. But then you have to say, well, but did you consider this? Did you consider that? You know, maybe think about this from a slightly different direction. You give them coaching and then it gets better. That's exactly the same way with ChatGPT. It's never going to come back with the perfect thing that you can say, this is my final right. product. But some of the things that it comes back with, you start to think about, wow, I did not even think about it that way. And it gets you to the destination a lot faster. And, mm -hmm. and so I think the change readiness aspect of this, you just have to get in a mindset where you're going to start trying these things. Because I tell you, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things that I think is going to be a huge differentiator in the, in the future is the firm or the people that figure out how to get their troops to start using these tools and embracing them that's right. the firm that's going to be hard to beat so if, if mm. you're a small firm you know you've, you've got your, it's your sole practitioner three-person team five-person team but you guys know how to use the tools you can play at a much higher level than sort of historically you were able to do in terms of productivity and what your team can accomplish and that is probably not the biggest but one of the largest pain points that I run into because at tax for marketer, one of our major, if not the biggest goal is to help our clients grow. And we, we do it relationally, but we do it online, right? So we're trying to help our clients grow. But when we get to the point of not everyone's looking to grow, to be clear, like some people that sign up, it's like, Hey, I just want to refresh my marketing. I just want to fix my website. That's broken. Mm -hmm. That's great too. But generally speaking, the pain point is growth brings different bottlenecks and different problems. And I'm sitting here saying, okay, well, obviously, like, we're, our job is to bring you leads. And you're saying, I don't have enough manpower. I don't have time. So is there a sense that, because you've already kind of named it, like one accountant with mm -hmm. AI tools could be two or three, even presently to those that have seen that. Is this like a bottleneck breaker for our industry in terms of the lack of talent available to hire? So this this will help the pipeline issue. So we and so I just rolled off a three year term on the board for the Missouri Society of CPAs. So I lead mm -hmm. the the transformation task force for the Missouri Society. So we've looked at this immensely over the last couple mm -hmm. of years, watching enrollment trends, watching the number of people that are in accounting programs but aren't taking the CPA exam, and the trends aren't great. I mean, there's a whole bunch of, of buzz in the market now. Should we change the 150? You know, there's there's a lot of things that we have to fix. We've got to fix busy season. We've got to fix comp. I mean, there's all those issues that that have to be addressed. Um, right. You know, but when I step back and think about it, if I'm a smaller firm and I'm looking to grow, these technologies present opportunities that have never existed before. And mm -hmm. and that's the kind of thing that you you have to sort of wake up to that opportunity and recognize that it's there and maybe the tools today aren't the right tools to help you you know accomplish everything you want to do but if you figure out and learn how to embrace these tools and when they come out to figure out a way that you can start to build them into your workflow take these new capabilities and figure out how to capitalize on them that's what's going to make you know any firm any professional much you know play at a very high level compared to their peers Right. And that is like, you know, even now, like there are scalable ways that AI is going to find us and, you know, just nudge us because it gets into the softwares we use daily. But even now, um, like the simple things ChatGPT and Bard with Google or other AI tools can do just to help you stay organized, to help you summarize emails, to help you get stuff out or again, get inspired mm -hmm. emails you need to write, like just asking it to choose some of them mindless thinking that you are just typing away at your keyboard for 15 minutes to write this client email. And maybe, especially with training these systems, you can train them quite well. Um, you could crank through things at scale right now and you just don't even know it. You're just not even aware, not to mention that even on the more technical side, there could be more innovation as you're hinting at that just makes it like, oh, now I get it. Yeah. Now this is just finding me in a way that I have to acknowledge. Yeah. So our our perfect world. So we we have a we've got a pretty big virtual CFO practice. So we've got about 70 people in that practice. And and one of the things that we're looking at from a technology standpoint is our perfect world is to be able to so chat GPT, you got to be concerned about security. So you can't do this now. Right. However, the tools right. that should be available 30, 60 days when you have like your own instance of these things, basically, you know, our dream put a set of financial statements into the tool 
and basically have it run all the ratios, do the analysis, and come back to you with a top 10 list of these are things that you need to look at that, that you know the trends that are identified. Now, a human could do that, and that would take two or three hours of pouring through the financial statements. As you get more senior mm-hmm. and more experience, you could do it faster. But you know, to, to start with that, basically have that happen within 60 seconds, and then for a seasoned professional to look at that list of 10 and say, nah, seven of these are red herrings, but man, these three are real issues that we need to deal with. How much did that accelerate mm. that cycle time? You are now dealing with the issues that that need that human element, uh, you know, that that aspect of it, but you got there so much faster. So you think about, you know, right. today in a particular client, if you're going to analyze two sets of financial statements, you can maybe get through three in a day. Well, imagine if you could get through six in a day. You know, that that's the mm. kind of thing that when you start thinking about how exponentially could this happen, and then you start looking at it hitting you know, different tool sets and and those types of things. And, you know, I'm very blessed. My kids bring, they educate me. So they bring some of these new tools right. to me. And and we were, uh, my daughter and I were, were talking about something and she goes, well, dad, you know, there's a tool for that. I'm like, no, what are you, what are you talking hey. about? And she's, she's like, cause we were talking about tone of email and how can you assess the tone mm. of an email? Cause if you're, if English isn't your native language, or if you're, you've got less experience and you're not sure how things come off, there are tools that you can put in that will actually help you assess the tone of something. And you can put your writing into it and say, how does this appear? Is this too formal? Is this too whatever? I mean, so these tools that we've never even thought of are, are there mm. and are, and, you know, just like in this case, I wasn't even aware that this tool existed, but my daughter did. That's the kind Mm -hmm. of competitive advantage that by scanning the landscape and being open to this, you are going to be able to pick up on those things that will dramatically improve your productivity that others won't even be aware of. Oh, that's wonderful. And this, it might be a segue because we're talking about, you know, just looking at the landscape and we're talking about AI and tools. Um, Just, this is one of our points for today that I think is worth definitely giving time to talk us about the growth strategies that you see post-pandemic in our industry, in our space. And obviously, I think some of these things are definitely interconnected. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, you know, and it goes back to my why, why is now a great time uh, to, to, to be a, C, a not even a young CPA, just a CPA in general. And I think a lot of the growth strategies that are possible now that because of the pandemic and because so many people are now accustomed to remote work, that I, I think that's probably the biggest thing, which now, mm. you know, it used to be, your scope was limited. You know, let, let's say you're in a small community and you get really, you help a coffee shop and you figure out their KPIs, you figure out how to make them better, make the, the owner's life better. You know, you've got that figured out. How many other coffee shops are there in your town that you possibly can serve? Three or four, maybe. But then you think about, okay, well, what changed in the pandemic? Well, now when you think about growth, you can serve any coffee shop anywhere in the country. It just right. depends on how do you make sure you reach the coffee shop audience and how do you basically put your wares in front of those owners so they know because the vast majority of those folks they're not financially oriented they're trying to figure out how to run a coffee shop because they've got a passion for service or they really enjoy you know the the coffee or whatever but they're not financial people and that's our opportunity i think is to figure out how we can bring those skills which now you can use anywhere and you you can suddenly have you you went from a, an addressable market of four to now you have four thousand, you know, right. four hundred thousand. I mean, and and that's the opportunity. So when we think about growth from our perspective, the CPA profession has been and will continue to be relationship driven. And I think mm. you know when we think about the key and what differentiates us from the technology it really comes down to humans have relationships with other humans. There's a lot of things that tools can do that can help us, but at the end of the day, it's about that human relationship. And so now Mm -hmm. you think about your ability to touch so many more lives. So not only is it better for you financially, that you've got Mm -hmm. more opportunities, you know, to be able to serve in different places. But now if you're really passionate about that and you're driven by a mission to help coffee shop owners live their best lives and achieve their goals, you now can help more people achieve that. And then you think about other mechanisms. Well, I'm going to start a podcast about how coffee shop owners can, and then you touch more people that way. And it's like the, right. the growth opportunities that exist today, it'll still be relationship driven, but instead of it being geography focused, 
hey, who who's right. in my neighborhood or who's in my city? Now it becomes more discipline focused and specialization. So now your mm-hmm. coffee shop pitch can sell anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. And that that whole concept of specialization can be extremely powerful. And when you think about niching down and how that can lead to growth, there's opportunities there that never really even existed before just a couple of years ago. Oh, that's wonderful. And I talk about opportunities. I mean, we've got a lot of folks that we work with that are already in the bucket of, of providing advisory services, whether it's a complement or it's a primary focus. But some people that don't, whether they're selling tax prep land or bookkeeping or just whatever else they may be doing. If I'm talking with you and I'm a CPA that's not currently offering advisory services, um, because that's kind of what we're hitting on, right? Is being able to do that higher level analysis and the tools to help you leverage um, time and efficiencies to get that done quicker um, as a value add. But like, if I'm not, what would you say to someone like that? Like walk us through kind of like, hey, if, if I'm in that spot, these are the steps I would pursue to maybe start adding that and why I would consider that. Yeah. And and I think that, you know, a lot of people, when they do that self-assessment, you know, m- maybe you can't play, you don't have sophisticated tools or whatever, but I bet as part of what, of your, what you're doing and the relationships you have with your clients, you are making them better. You are improving their lives. You are helping them make better business decisions, but you've never really thought about it that way. A lot of folks, when I I talk about what do you do with advisory services and that kind of stuff, that's oftentimes what I hear, which is, well, I really don't do that. That's like, well, you really don't do that or you don't charge for that. And then when we start probing, a lot of times like, well, sure, we have that conversation. And they come to me with important business decisions and and I help them make those decisions. I'm like, that's advisory. You are advising, but you're not charging for it. You're not marketing it. You're not saying this is what I do. You're just saying I'm a CPA and kind of leaving at that. And I think right. historically, you know, so much of the CPA profession has been sort of focused in the past. And I think that that's one of the major shifts that I think is happening is that that's not what our clients want. Our clients want us to help them make better business decisions so that they can achieve their goals. And I think that future focus that's one of the things that's most exciting about me. And that, that's basically what being an advisor is, is helping look to the future. You have a skill set that's different than your client has. You have a different perspective. You can help them make better decisions. And in my mind, we do it in a lot of different ways. We have different flavors of our advisory practice. We do technology. We do analytics. We do you know just all sorts of things. But at the end of the day, all of those things are all about making a client's business better. So they're not coming to us because they have to, because it's a compliance thing that they have to have a tax return or they have to have an audit or a review. Instead, it's a totally different lens that they're coming to us because they know we can make them better and more successful. And that's that's kind of a cornerstone, I think, of you know why now's a great time to be a CPA, because you now have that right. ability to provide these advisory services. The market is giving us permission to do it and encouraging right. us to do it. And it's up to us as a profession to really take that advantage. And there's always been pockets of this going on for a long time. But I think sort of that mindset shift, we've always been the most trusted advisor. I think mm-hmm. the opportunity is for us to become the most valued advisor. And and mm-hmm. to do that, that's where we have to have this future focus. And that's where we have to focus on the impact that we can have on the future rather than just focusing on the past. And if I'm if I'm sitting here and I'm having these conversations already with my clients and I have relationships built on trust and I'm there, this feels like, as it obviously is, an acre of diamonds that you don't even know you have. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are sitting there saying, you know what, like, I, I like what I do, but I don't love it. And this is a way to start to love what you do and not just be compliance focused, but to offer value that's a little more um, it's all meaningful. Everything is relevant. People do need to be compliant. That obviously matters. But just to say like, you, they're looking for you to help them. They're looking for you to to give them advice and direction and you can get paid for it. And what I'm hearing you say is, and I think this is true as well, most of the time you're already doing the work. You just haven't understood it. It's just maybe happened. You floated into that, which is where obviously, um, you know, this conversation and, and Dave's group, like they can help with that. Like there's conversations that can move the ball forward and, and groups like this that can help you kind of evolve. And that evolution is usually not creating something new. It's just recognizing the thing you're probably already doing 
and need to start charging for because it is massively valuable yeah. and is much different than just getting papers done. Yeah. And I and I think, you know, we we can't let go of the the trust, the compliance, all of that stuff is a cornerstone and it's really important. This is more about where we can go with that foundation and how can we make it so that it really does become more. And I think to do that shift, one of the things I would recommend is you have to turn it into a product. You have to put some words around right. it and say, this is what I will do for you. And when you think about what you do, you probably do all this, but you've never made a list and put together a marketing brochure that says through this you know, virtual CFO relationship or whatever you want to call it, um, basically, this is what I will do for you. And I think nine out of 10 mm-hmm. times when somebody looks at this, they're going to say, yeah, that's valuable. How much is it? Mm-hmm. And and I think it's probably the value in their mind is probably a lot higher than what you've been charging in the past. So that's the opportunity to really reset some of these expectations. But then that also is CPAs. We then have to become accountable for delivering that value. And if we say mm-hmm. we're going to do all of these things, we have to do it. And if, if we're going to turn it into a product and we're going to do it consistently with quality, then we have to make sure that we have it repeatable. And then you've got to get into, well, what's your tech stack? How do you make sure that you can deliver this consistently? Okay, now I'm going to grow my practice. I'm going to go from five people to 10 people. How do I get these new five people to do the same level of quality as the rest of us? And that's the, you know, that that common scaling issue that you've got to leverage on, you know, you, you've got to do documentation. You've got to have a tech stack that enables that. There's a lot of those foundational things that you can do Sometimes it's painful to do, but at the end of the day, when you look at where you'll be once you make this transition, I think not only will it be better financially, but Christian, to one of the things you mentioned, it's a lot more enjoyable. And and I and I think that if you if you know smaller firm owners step back and look at that, what do I really love doing? You know, if you know, I do I do compliance for seven hours a day, but man, when I have that ninety minute meeting with this client, I go home at night and I feel really good about the difference I made in that ninety minutes. And I think that's what for all of and for some people that love the the compliance aspects and that's what there's nothing wrong with that. But it's if if you want something different, if you want maybe no more revenue potential, more growth potential, and that fits you, then I think this is a phenomenal time and a phenomenal opportunity. Yeah, I love that. And even circling back to the idea of it's a great time to be a young CPA right now. Certainly, you know, folks that have been around can innovate and evolve, but hopefully, because I know that you also spoke to just the lack of new um, individuals, professions, people coming out of college with their accounting degrees, their CPAs, coming into the private space um, in particular. The public thing is always going to be obviously the big um, job, you know, vacuum, pulling people into it. But hopefully, I think some of these tools and this orientation of being an advisor you could right now step in and if you get in front of the right crowd, like it's the coffee shop example, right? And you're in your 30s or your late 20s, you could build a really fun practice right now. You could build a great business for yourself. I mean, there really are like unending opportunities. And that's the good part about innovation and change is it's scary. It's uncomfortable. But for those that take advantage of it, whether old, young, or in between, um, Man, it's a fun time to be in this space. And I, I hope more people do keep coming into it, um, especially to the private sector, uh, because there's just so much demand. And then again, as we've been talking about, demand for things you're already doing that we just need to productize and start selling. So I, yeah. I love all that. That's yeah, super helpful. The, the world is only getting more complex. And these these smaller clients need more and more help than ever. Now they have to figure out, well, what is that help? Um, you know, kind of, and what do I pay for it? But part of that is we have to educate them on what we can do, because unless we tell them that, hey, did you know I can do this? And did you know it's a service? And did you know, here's how much it costs? Unless you have that conversation with prospects or your clients, they're not going to know that you do that. So we have to get much better of actually, you know, saying what we do, turning these things into products or solutions or whatever you want to call them, and then educating people that, that you do this. And I think, you know, to go back to the coffee shop example, you start thinking of the impact that you can have. Well, now if you Mm. get really good and you've got this this coffee shop practice, well, then you think if you're in your 30s, why can't I go out and help people in their 30s who want to open coffee shops? And it's a different and, and, you know, when you think about that, well, then you play that out and it's like, well, maybe I take an ownership stake 
in these coffee shops that were opening because I'm their success partner. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. And then you layer in right. the technology as part of that. And that, you know, those are the things that I get really excited about. Because I think today, when we look three, five, 10 years down the road, I think things are going to be dramatically different than they are today. And people need right. to start adopting that mindset that it may not seem like that much change on a day-to-day -day basis. But one of my predictions in 2024 is that every single month, I'm going to have an aha moment with a new tool that's doing something that I hadn't even thought of that makes mm. me say, wow, I didn't see that coming. And we've already had a few instances of those things or a tool that we are aware of, but then we thought about applying it in a different direction. It's like, mm. wow, that, that could be really powerful. So I think, you know, mm. just now's a great time but you sort of have to be prepared for change and and kind of understand personally how you're going to embrace that. What does it mean to you and how are you going to make it work for you? Yes. And that is one of the roadblocks to change is just being okay with the volatility. And I think in our space, pandemic behind us now, thank goodness, and all of the volatility we had uh, just doing compliance work. I mean, my goodness, it was a lot of change. And so if you're still around in this space, you're obviously somewhat comfortable with change, but that is, it's a mindset. If you can get in that mindset of being okay with how you do things and the tools you use evolving more rapidly than anyone may want, but it's for the better, mm -hmm. I think that you're going to succeed. But they, that was wonderful. Just as we kind of wrap up here, um, any other predictions for 2024 or any other things we didn't get to talk about you want to leave us with? Well, I think the, you know, I, I think we've covered a lot of ground. I think we we've hit a lot of the foundational aspects. When I think about 2024, you know, and, and me and uh, we, we have great debates about this. You know, we've been talking about the death of the billable hour. We've been talking about the death of actually preparing tax returns. You know, we've been talking about that for decades. And so the the Anders head of tax and I, we have these debates all the time about, you know, maybe not this busy season, 2024, but my bet is busy season 2025, we're going to have a significant number of the returns prepared by these types of technologies. And so I think, mm -hmm. you know, when I start looking at that and then I start playing that out in other parts of the practice, as I see these tools coming along, you know, that I hope to be surprised many, many times in 2024 and beyond. Um, and I think, you know, that, that you'll only be surprised if you're if you're looking for new things and if you want to be aware of this. And I think that that would be the mindset that I'd recommend people do, because otherwise this stuff's going to be forced on you. And I think if you have mm -hmm. the mindset, kind of the pandemic was forced on us and we didn't have a choice but to change. It's all, And it wasn't very pleasurable. I think when we think about no. going forward, if it's your choice and you're saying this vision, this idea really interests me and I'd like to make it a reality, and then you start putting energy and effort around it, then that's when you're going to have those pleasant surprises. And you're going to be, you know, part of what we think, we're a progressive firm at Anders, and we think we're moving faster than other firms. And we think that gives us the opportunity to pick up market share because we know there are others out there that are not thinking about this, that are too busy executing on their current work and are not really right. thinking about the future. And I think that's right. a huge opportunity for firms at any size, at any level, in any right. niche to really make something different. So, so those would be some yes. of the predictions and things that are rolling around in my head that I hope others are starting mm. to you know, think about and, and debate with as well. Oh, I love that. That's a, a great point. And I, I don't want to follow that rabbit trail too far just because of time, but like, what a great part of your sales pitch and value proposition that you are not just tech forward as a badge you wear. That means nothing, but like, I can show you, here's the tools we use. Here's the things that we're going to do to be able to deliver, you know, more quick, efficient, optimized results, give you better advice. And I think that as an end user or as a potential client of Anders, right? Like that just would go a long way as I was comparing my options, right? Like that goes a long way in differentiation and giving something tangible of this is why we're gonna be able to execute at a higher level for you because we are willing to adopt and change and evolve. Um, and there's lots of ways to build your business. And some people may not wanna scale in those ways. and may be okay and they've got a client base that's really comfortable, but I think that's gonna be the exception. I think moving forward, there's gonna be a lot of need to adapt and evolve as more groups like you come out and realize like, you know, beyond the 20% that we talked about that are already engaging. As that starts to grow, 
this is just going to become like a default. Like you said, you're going to have to deal with this anyway, eventually better to get ahead of it and just roll with it. Right. Um, then to get blasted by a wave later on. So that yeah, was so helpful. Hundred percent. Yeah. I love that. Dave, I'm going to have to have you back sometime. Um, thanks for your time and thanks for sharing that with our audience. And, uh, yeah, with that, guys, thanks for being on the Pro Marketer Podcast. And uh, we've got lots of other resources. Uh, Dave, where should we send people to connect with you further or any other resource um, that you'd like us to leave in the show notes? Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a big LinkedIn guy. So if you want to connect with me, Dave Hartley on LinkedIn. I'm with Anders CPAs and Advisors. So that's where I share the, the majority of my my thinking. But Anders is a firm, uh, anderscpa.com. We put out a ton of thought leadership. We have podcasts. We have all sorts of different things that you can learn from, which is another advantage. There's now more sources that you can learn from than ever if, if you want right. to grow you now have access to those things. So anderscpa.com, connect with me on LinkedIn and just sources like this, I think are fantastic. There are communities out there. You just have to find the one that's right for you. Oh, wonderful. I totally agree. So Anders CPA, find Dave on LinkedIn, lots of good information and content that's going to be coming from them. And so if you're looking to keep this conversation going, you now know where to go. Um, hit them up, shoot us an email, all those things. We'll be glad to help anyone that wants to keep this conversation going. And uh, yeah, we'll leave it there. So thank you again, Dave. Thanks for your time. And I look forward to doing this again in the future. You bet. Thanks, Christian. Appreciate it.